Hey guys. Hi, Tim. Yes, a heartbreaker for Gonzaga tonight. They nearly pulled off an improbable comeback only to fall short. Yeah, this team kind of like a brotherhood all season, and I think it was on display most tonight as the players walked off the court. Multiple players crying, like Brandon Clark and Zach Norvell Jr. I think the big one shining moment there after the game was Gino Crandall walking up to Zach Norvell Jr. telling him to keep his head up and high spirits, and a lot of those emotions flowed over into the locker room. How much has this team meant to you? Everything. We did everything, you know, for each other, with each other. Uh, hang out every day, you know, even on the road at home too. So I'm just miss you not know, playing for for a higher reason. You know, I don't know if it'll be like that you know, anywhere else or at the next level. Uh, so I'll just forever cherish, you know, the love, you know, playing for love and playing with these dudes. Uh, just the most fun I had playing with a group of guys in my life. Uh, you know, off the court, on the court, you know, these guys were amazing. You know, my brothers for life. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a tremendous season. It, it, it's just been, it's been amazing, honestly. And, and, I mean, I don't even know how to put it other than there's just so much love in this room. And, you know, I've, I've got 14 guys that I can call my brothers for the rest of my life. You know, the coaching staff is obviously will be mentors to me forever. And um, it's been, just been amazing to be a part of. I mean... Uh, it's like family, you know. Everybody's so close together. We're all brothers, and uh, stuff to you know, end it here. You know, uh, we might not we might not play you know together next season. So stuff to be separated like that, and I just really really love them, and it was a a great season to play with them. You know, I just knew it was uh, most most likely the end of my career here. Um, I'm just I knew it was just going to be my last time playing with you know some of some of those guys. So obviously, it's something that you know I didn't like feeling, but um, uh, just you know we just really had high hopes that we would make it past this game. So uh, just kind of hurt a little bit. If you notice at the beginning of that Brandon Clark soundbite, he said he was crying after the game because it is most likely the end of his Gonzaga career. So if you had any questions about whether or not he is headed to the NBA, he may have just answered them for you right there. Yeah, and there was another player that won't be on the court next season that had a game-defining play that everyone's talking about. It was Josh Perkins who reached over that inbounds line to touch the ball, which ended up being a technical foul. He was very emotional in the locker room after the game. When you hear them call a technical, what's going through your brain? I just automatically, you know, thought it was my fault again. Yeah, no, I definitely hit him. Um, but he was ball faking a lot, and I thought he ball faked, you know, right in front of me. I guess, you know, instincts you know, kicked in, and I just tried to swipe it away. Didn't really know the, you know, the rules on that one. So, uh, something I have to live with for the rest of my life. Here's the kicker. Matt Mooney, the Texas Tech player inbounding the ball, told the media after the game that if Perkins hadn't fouled him, it might have ended up in a turnover, either a five-second violation or Mooney having to throw the ball away. But obviously, Texas Tech was doing a lot of good things tonight, and they were having the, their way with Gonzaga on both offense and defense. Yeah, the Ra Raiders are very well known for their defense, but their offense came playing today, and they were hitting big buckets at these huge moments of the game. Uh, Davida Moretti hit that 1-3 that put them up 66-60 with 146 remaining. And Z Gonzaga had to work fast to come back in that after that. Even before that, Texas Tech just hit big shots the whole entire game. And then on defense, they were wreaking havoc. If you just look at the turnover numbers, that's where they made their biggest margin uh, of just getting out in front of this game. They had 16 turnovers forced and got 17 points off of those. They played more physical in this game than Gonzaga did, and the players for Gonzaga surely pointed that out after the loss. There were some timely turnovers here and there, so that's probably the biggest you know, difference in the game was us not getting them to turn the ball over and them forcing us into a couple. They, were, they did a good job defensively, uh, being handsy on, on the ball, and, and we were not strong enough, and, and um, 
I think they were they they hit some big shots at the end too, and and uh, that's why we lost. Yeah. Um, they're just really handsy, and they did a, a uh, good job to kind of taking um, advantage of the physicality that they don't call as many fouls in the NCAA tournament. Just looking forward for Gonzaga. They're going to lose Josh Perkins, Gino Crandall, and Jeremy Jones for certain as they're all seniors, and it's probably likely that Rui Hachimura and Brandon Clark will both leave for the NBA. So that leaves Corey Kispert, Killian Tilly, and Zach Norvell. I expect Tilly to be back after the up and down season that he had. It also means that Gonzaga is welcoming in their first ever top five recruiting class. Those players are expected to have a big impact early. And of course, they're also will that Gonzaga will be on the transfer market. They are looking for an experienced point guard to take over this team now that Josh Perkins is going to be graduating. Reporting in Anaheim, I'm Brenna Green. He's Karthik Ben Katraman, Crim2 Sports. Brenna, Karthik, and our photographer, Brett, thanks so much for your hard work in Anaheim. Zag Nation, of course, heartbroken tonight. The run for the title ended earlier than they hoped for. Nonetheless, the Bulldogs had a historic season, and Creme 2 Shayna Waltower was on the campus this afternoon with reaction from fans and students. Yeah, not the ending we all were hoping for for this game, and neither were many of the students that were here today. I'm here just outside of Cataldo Hall, which is where many students were gathered watching this game on the big screen, rooting for the Zags all day for the past several hours, including. And they were sitting in front of the screen just cheering from the very beginning of the game. They were all looking and excited, and you could feel all of that emotion that was inside here. But then as the game continued on and that gap started to increase a little bit more is where a bit more of the the tense emotions started to build up and if there's one word I'd use to describe this game it would be stressful. I think we all felt the stress of this game as it continued to build up and so did many of the students inside as well. I was really stressed this entire game but I got really hyped up and excited every time we came close to tying it up or when even when we did tie it up those were really exciting moments. We're all freshmen so we were kind of hoping our first year we would go to the final four and we've been doing so good this season just kind of heartbreaking that we've gotten this far and lost. So again, not the ending that we all were hoping for, but it was still something that brought us all together for at least a couple of hours. Reporting on Gonzaga University's campus, Shana Waltower, Krem2 News. Even though the season is over, it was a spectacular one either way. People near and far are hurting from the Zag loss, but are congratulating them for their tremendous season. We want to take a look at some tweets here. Our very own Brennan Green tweeted a quote from head coach Mark Few, and he said they were a joy to coach, and that's why it hurts. There's a lot of love in the room. Former Krem reporter Evan Klosky zeroed in on Perkins, saying, hate that Perkins ends his collegiate career like that, but he's one of the all-time winningest players in the NCAA history. Amazing career, and that it was, Evan. From one Spokane team to another, the Spokane Indians tweeted out, we're always proud of the way you represent our city. Future Zag Drew Timmy is all positivity, saying, what a great season, proud of my family, adding, just know we will be back. Gonzaga's president, Thane McCullough, also focusing on the positive, tweeting out, so proud of our Zags, thank you for an amazing season. And last but definitely not least, the man himself, Jimmy Kimmel, had this to say, congratulations to my new friends at Gonzaga on a great season, imaginary or otherwise, I have grown very fond of you. And Jimmy, yes, we do exist. March Madness isn't over. You can still catch the games on Krem 2 tomorrow night. Kentucky will play Auburn, who upset overall one seed North Carolina. This game is in Kansas City at 220. Then Duke will take on Michigan State in D.C. at 505. While many of you may have been watching March Madness inside, hopefully you had time to get outside and enjoy the sunshine, but the future does have a little bit more rain in store. But let's focus on the positive first. Michelle Boss in the Weather Center now to break it all down for us. Hi, Michelle. Hi, I think we still have several days of some nice weather ahead of us. So great news there. You know, maybe a mountain shower tomorrow, but that's about it. Checking out satellite and radar right now. Any flashes of green you're seeing? Just plain old uh, ground clutter. We're looking at 
mostly clear to partly cloudy skies across much of the inland northwest and pretty quiet weather expected overnight and through the next couple of days. 41 degrees in Spokane, so not particularly chilly for this time of night, though it has cooled down a little bit more up north. Deer Park, Sandpoint, these are going to be the locations, especially across northeastern Washington and the far northern Panhandle. It can see temperatures dipping below freezing and in, even into the upper 20s, but elsewhere pretty mild. Moses Lake 49, still in the mid 40s in Lewiston. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. We should be bottoming out here in Spokane in the middle to upper 30s with partly cloudy skies overnight and should see a fair amount of sunshine tomorrow. That's going to allow temperatures to get back up into the middle and upper 50s, light winds and partly sunny skies. All right, we want to take a live look downtown. A beautiful night out there. You can see all the lights lit up. A beautiful weekend in the inland northwest and a perfect time to check out opening weekend of the skate ribbon at Riverfront Park. For the last two weeks, the city parks and recreation department converted the ice rink into a smooth skate rink. The skate ribbon is now open for roller skating, roller blading and even scootering. Starting today, admission and helmets are free and they're free all season. You can rent roller skates and scooters or bring your own.